we start off with who might have very well been the biggest topic of these prospects, and that's Jaden Daniels. Because he got a little beat up last night, guys. He definitely got a little beat up last night. Like this show was not kind to him at all in any way, shape, yeah. or form, basically. Um so the scouting team meeting they said about him, three time team uh captain, not a vocal leader, but improved in that category last year. Uh, getting a feel for recall will be important. Now, recall is something that was a very big thing in these combine interviews. So, meaning I throw you a play, you can repeat it back to me that quickly. And keep in mind, a play is not like it is in Madden. Like, we're not like, I form. Like, no, no, that's not what it is. Like, they're well, giving you're you like all Madden, where you're talking about your X, Y, F, and uh, your positions, and you're talking about you're breaking that down your line, moving around, yeah, <clears throat> all four receivers, and then you switch around and call your audibles on the play. That's what they're doing. It was very, very. Yeah, in-depth. it was like no ten words with five letters and numbers randomly thrown into it, kind of scenarios. You know, it like, seemed like I was taking calculus all over again. Yeah, it, and, and listen, this is why I've always said like people like to talk about the physical abilities of a quarterback. They don't talk enough about the mental parts of it. There's a huge mental aspect of this, and it's probably just as important as the physical. You know, some of the best quarterbacks that were winners, the mental aspect was was big about them. Even some guys that made it that weren't very athletic, like I'll use Chad Pennington as a great example oh, back in the day. I, I I was a big fan of him when he was playing because he was not the most physically gifted player by any stretch of the imagination, but he was smart, he was gritty, and he got the job done. So Anyway, Jaden Daniels is asked to draw up his favorite play on a whiteboard and to be as detailed as possible. They asked him while drawing a route if that was Neighbors, which I thought was interesting. Like, they didn't ask anybody else except Neighbors. And I kind of got the vibe that that was thrown in there to kind of give a hint to, like, we may be interviewing him more to find out about Neighbors than actually him. Yeah. That's how I took that. Yeah. Yeah. Like and I don't know if that's what it was, but it was kind of like they were concerned really where neighbors was on this play. And being that we drafted neighbors, obviously, it makes you wonder were they trying to see what college plays he liked or you know what things he did well like that and get the perspective of somebody who played with them like that. I don't know. Because obviously these are edited videos. It's not like they gave us the whole interview. But the fact that, that made it in there made me think that there was probably some things thrown in specifically to get a feel for neighbors and neighbors and daniel's you know relationship at that point during this whole process here um anyway while he was doing that um shay tierney asks him what his favorite route to throw on that play is and where daniels is uh is then asked to change the play based on directives that brian dable gives him and he wasn't like slow he was like do this do this do this to that do this that he was like like it was fast yeah it was like think fast, be fast, Chad Power style. Like it was, it was definitely fast. Um, but he's got to have to do that. If you're in the NFL, you're going to have to do that. Like you think quick on your feet. That's part of the process there. And yeah, listen, you're going to change a play that quickly in a headset necessarily, but you might if you're on a on a on a downswing mm-hmm. of a, a, you know, play clock. No, it's also, and, and it's also it's not just that. It's also. When the bodies are moving on the field and you have to call an audible, there's you can't vocalize how fast those body movements are happening in. And if they want to see if you could call an audible on the field, you need to be able to read that defense the way it sets up. So this way you could call that faster than it gets relayed over your headphones. Yeah. But I think part of it also is not even just the play calling aspect of you're getting a feel for how quickly he processes things. You know, we've talked about processing a lot with Daniel Jones. Processing is a huge part of being an NFL quarterback. You have to process what's in front of you before the snap. You have to process what's happening during the play itself. And you have a split second not even to do it. And I think that's a lot lot of what that was there. Um, 100%. So after that, he's asked to repeat a play that um, Dave will call, you know, get into that recall. He wasn't able to do it. He messed up. Um, he's then asked if it's cover one on the play that he has on the whiteboard, what do they want him to do? He says, throw a TD. 
Now, not the worst answer in the world. Obviously, throwing a TD is a good option. But that's not what the Giants were looking for. They were looking for who's the open person, where do you hit him at, that kind of thing. That's what they were looking for. And while throw a TD is a good option if you don't have the right answer, he didn't have the right answer. That was not a good look, I think. And I think they all thought it was funny and he was just trying to be humorous. No, he was trying to cover his bucks. He didn't know the answer. That's how I took that 100%. Especially with that kind of nervous smile he gave after he said it. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, he, Daniels also asked how he would handle it if he starts off badly for the, you know, the first couple of weeks. You know, how, how he would handle that situation. And then mid-answer, he's asked to repeat the play from earlier. And again, he can't do it. You know, I'm not going to sit there and bash a guy over, a, you know, a, a four, five-minute segment on a TV show and say he's not going to make it in this NFL. But a guy we got to see twice a year now, guys, at least for the next four or five years, potentially. A guy that you would think the Giants wouldn't want to tick off. And they just made him look bad on nationally syndicated is that the word you would use now i guess so i mean tv program that is very popular in the nfl community because let's be honest guys there's nothing else going on right now in the nfl world like this is the biggest thing so you just basically publicly embarrassed him on the largest available stage this time of year and you when you do stuff like that people don't forget that especially the good ones so either the Giants are very confident that he's not that good or the Giants don't have control <laughs> as much as people think of the editorial process in this whole thing. But yeah, that's that's kind of a dangerous move to kind of give this guy locker room kind of, you know, material to throw up when we play them in week two. And Jane Daniels like, hey, remember this? These are the these are the jackasses that made me look bad on on, on hard knocks. Let's hey, do remember, a touchdown. Yeah, <laughs> remember that play? You want me to, uh, you know, dissect? Here's your touchdown. Yeah, like that. That's it's dangerous. But part of me also wonders. So we talked about it during the during the draft. Like we said, you know, part of what you got to look at when this whole thing is, you know, was his success his success? Or was it the fact that he had, you know, Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas, two of the top five receivers in the draft, also on that team? Along with, you know, Brian Kelly as a head coach, he's got a history of getting the best out of quarterbacks. So I don't know. I honestly, if I was a commander fan, I would not like what I saw. As a giant fan, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, because we said Jane Daniels was probably the best quarterback in the draft. Obviously, we didn't have the chance to sit down in a one-on-one and have these kind of conversations. If this has happened before the draft, I don't know what this would have done to our opinion. The only other thing, and I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. Go for it. He yeah, could, no, go for it. He could just be that, yeah, you know, the young guy that doesn't know how to articulate what he sees on the fields, but just knows how to do it when he sees it out there. Like the rain man of quarterbacking. It could be like. Listen, you think Brett Favre came out of college going through you know, when he's going to draft it and articulate it, how he throws these different balls? But, I mean, they highlighted him throwing different slants and understanding like how he threw the ball later in his career. But I think, not I think it. Favre learned to be a quarterback under Holmgren. And I don't think that he would have been the same player if he didn't have that tutelage early on. Favre's kind of a weird scenario because he had the physical tools I don't think he had necessarily the mental tools when he started off. You know, but maybe that's Jaden Daniels too. I mean, he's just Jaden Daniels. I don't think I, he's I'll tell you this. Cliff here. Kingsbury is not a Mike Holmgren. <laughs> no, no, he's not. I'm, I'm, I'm just devil's advocate. I'm just saying. I know. I'm I, not I, saying. I don't want to overblow it because it's a four or yeah. five minute segment. Like It'd be a little ridiculous for us to change our entire opinion based on a four or five minute edited segment. Correct. That'd be utterly insane. 
I mean, it makes you me don't better about the fact that we have to face him twice a year than I did prior but, to the episode airing. And it, once again, playing devil's advocate, maybe Giants do have a lot of that in, and they say, let's make let's make Daniels look like a, a fool in this scenario, like not thinking about the repercussions about playing him twice a year because they say we got the commander's number. Yeah, I would hope they wouldn't be that cocky. We, with our record of the last decade, it's hard to be cocky. <laughs> yeah. I'm just devil's advocate here. So just putting it out there. If you like that clip, then you will love the full episodes too. Find us on your favorite podcast app and look for us on all your favorite social media platforms. Thanks so much. Please, I'm, I'm begging you. Please, please subscribe. <laughs>